it's the end of April and us gardeners have been itching to get things out of the polytunnels and greenhouses and into the ground outside. But if I was you, I'd hold off just a little bit longer. The Met Office and the weather reports online and on TV have been saying that we are due a very cold spell. Our Arctic weather is coming down from the north to the south and it's going to create frosts that we weren't expecting. So with that being in mind, whether it happens or not, because they have been wrong in the past, um, we need to prepare for that. And in this episode, we are going to create something which will help us with that. Now, last year, we showed you a video on how to create a 100 hour candle and loads of you in your droves have been actually making those candles and using them in your greenhouses and things like that. But today I'm going to show you another way and this is going to be a very efficient alcohol burner. So stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how to make one. To make this alcohol burner you're going to need some tools okay we have a little drill here we've got two drill bits this one is a little small ideally i would have liked it to be the diameter of the pipe i'm using but i haven't got one so we'll be using this and we'll be widening the hole and we need the smallest drill bit you can find and that's quite important okay so we've got two drill bits you're going to need yourself a little hacksaw we need a kiln a jar, okay, you've all seen these for canning. And some silicone, some candle wick, a little bit of board, some play pit sand, okay. Now, you really need a fine sand. Builder sand just ain't gonna do this. And when I first had this, it was very wet. And um, I put this pan in the oven and dried it and then I got a fork and mushed it up so it's all nice and fine. So we need that and we need a little funnel. The other thing we need is a length of copper mill pipe. This is eight mil pipe and um, obviously the bigger you get it, uh, the, the better this will be. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to tape our funnel to the top of this post, ideally, I would have liked to get a funnel that would have fitted inside this, but as you can see, that diameter is very small. The smallest funnel I can find goes over, but if we tape that, um, we're still able to, to deal with it. So we just get a bit of tape. And we'll create a seal around that. There we go. And we need to block up the other end, guys, all right? So just put a piece of tape over the top of it. And then one around it. We'll take this off later. There we go. So the next thing we need to do now is fill this tube with sand. So we can't get any more in there. And if you use this play pit sand, it will just filter just like an hourglass for you. And uh, you'll have no problems filling the pipe. Now, the reason we're filling this pipe is because we need to bend it. Don't be afraid to tap it. There we are, I think we're full already. You really need to get this pipe full. Now, because we want to bend the pipe, we need to pull this off now. Because we want to bend the pipe, if we weren't to put anything in it, then it would fold, it would crease, and then that'd be no good to us. There we go. So we've got one pipe full of sand, much heavier, but now we should be able to bend this without worrying about it creasing. So what we need to do now is go down to my garage. It's in a bit of a state, but um, down there we've got a vice. So that's the next stage is to get down there. It will be a bit darker, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. 
So I've got here some plastic tubing. You can't see my face, I'm sorry, but um, inside it I've got the, uh, this is about roughly the diameter I want. So um, I've put the handle of a hammer inside just to stop it from crushing down too much. And I don't know if you're gonna be in the way there, but, but essentially what we wanna do is wrap or bend this pipe right around this form the best we can without creasing it. it takes a bit of welly but we will get there in the end Try and keep the coil together, guys, and I'll make for a much. Excellent, here we go. So now we should be able to pull this off here. And this is what we're after, okay? So we've made a nice coiled piece. Now, if you notice, there is no creases or anything, it's just pure coiling in there and the so, uh, sand has done the thing. Next thing now, we just need to cut this off. We can go back outside for that. So our next step now is we need to, we've created our coil and we now need to cut this off the same level. I'm gonna use this piece of timber for that, just to give me a rough idea. Now, don't get me wrong, guys, there are a lot easier ways to, um, here we are, we can empty that. There are a lot easier ways to empty one of these, or to cut one of these, I should say. But um, it's what I've got here, so. So we've created that. Now what we need to do, might have to bring them in a bit more so we can get them inside the jar. So this is where we're looking for now is to, now, place them within the jar okay the next step now is to mark the lid so we need to open this now this is a kilner jar used for chutneys and things like that okay um, we don't need that label and the lid comes in two parts so you've got a nice flat disc here with a rubber seal and this is quite important and then you've got a lid then it'll come over the top and create that seal so First thing we need to do is drill that and I need to mark it first. Right, so what we do now, we place this in the center and we just mark it so we know where we've got to drill. It's not gonna be pretty, we just need an idea. Just like this, guys. Okay? Right. Now we just need to drill in the center of those. Make sure you've got a hard piece of timber behind it to stop it from blowing out at the back. Don't press too hard, let the drill bit do the work. So now what I need to do now is widen this hole. Right, 
for those of you who've got the correct size drill bit it won't be a problem but i'm gonna have to work on this a little bit We got him so that's what we're looking for guys all right it's just to be able to push this in like so okay yeah okay so we put our lid on like this push our feet up as much as we can okay we can now screw this to the jar. Which will seal it, okay? Now, what we need to do now is get some silicone. This is an old silicone that they've had lying around. In fact, it's part of the uh, shed build. I'm just gonna have to clean it out because it's been sat here for a while. Bear with me one moment. Okay, so we just need to seal right around these now. And the reason we're doing that is we need to create a sealed chamber. Next thing we need to do is find our very small drill bit. The smaller the better. And we just need to drill a very, very small hole. Okay, what we need to do now is try and hold this and put a small hole in you. Okay, so when this um, silicone goes off now, they'll hold that in place. And um, so this is the finished jar, okay? Um, what I will say is that this hole could have been a bit squarer, but it's not an issue. The only thing now we've got left is to put some of this into the pipework. Now, why the reason this is so efficient is we're not actually burning any uh kerosene or alcohol or anything like that and like a traditional sort of um burner you would have a wick like this it would be soaked in alcohol or whatever and you'd like the top of the wick with this we're not actually lighting the wick the wick is only going to come up to here the rest of this is all going to be just the fumes and that's what we're going to be burning so it's going to burn very cleanly and obviously it's going to last quite some time. So I'm gonna let that go off and later on I will put the wick in, we'll soak the wick and we'll see you lit. 
what I've done here now um, I've taken the lid off for the moment and as you can see we've just literally shoved up one of the wicks right up by folding it in half like this and shoving it right up into that pipe it does take a little bit of going but once you get going you're fine there we go keep folding it feed it up the pipe you don't want to feed it around the bend but you just want to get it up as far as you can I think that's about it so there we have our wicks okay now what we need to do now is measure how far down I think probably around there and we're gonna cut these wicks here okay so that's essentially our burner done now this guy's is isopropanol alcohol okay and it's 99.9% .9 pure now this stuff will burn um, or the fumes will burn from this and it will give a really clean burn there'll be no smoke or anything okay so we're just going to pour this now into here quite carefully I'm going to fill it up to about three quarters of the way because I don't need any more than that. Now, all we have to do is place the wicks into the alcohol. There we go. So now they're going to soak up the alcohol and they'll produce a fume out of this little hole here. I drilled two holes because one wasn't quite centre. I'm now going to fill this, this other little hole here with a little bit of solder which will leave us the one right in the centre. Um, it was a little awkward. Um, I had a very short drill bit and I couldn't come down between, uh, between the coil which you would normally do. So um, I've drilled a new one. And we're going to fill that one in now with a little bit of solder and then we're done the next thing now you'll see a burning but we're going to have to give these wicks now chance to soak up this alcohol and to start sending some fumes around that it's uh you'll probably see this much better in the dark but um so there we go we've got it lit now but in a moment and i know what the issue is here that hole i soldered in is obviously melted so i'm gonna to have to use some sort of putty or something on that but this will still give you the idea of how it runs in a moment now as it warms up the gases will start to push out here we go and this yellow flame will turn all blue in a moment and you'll have just a little arc here starting to step down as soon as it starts pushing now don't forget guys we're not burning alcohol here we're just burning the fumes and they're coming out under pressure due to heat and I'll get a finer and finer burn as the coil heats up This could be a great way for heating up tunnels and things like that. Very, very economical. When you consider the price of other types of fuels like paraffin. Well guys, there it is. Our copper coil alcohol burner. All I will say, if you're going to use a, an open flame like this, make sure you have it somewhere where it's secure. 
that it can't blow over maybe even place it into some sort of container some box or something like that some metal container or something that will help to uh, protect the actual jar but that's it guys You know, it's a fair old flame on there. And the only thing we're burning is fumes. I'm going to blow that out. You'll still hear the gases for a little while till the coil cools down. And then all you have to do next time is heat it up and away you go again. So guys... One really, really efficient copper coil alcohol burner. Didn't take long to build. You just need a mason jar, a bit of copper piping, some sand, and uh, a little bit of silicone. What I will say is, obviously, if you're using naked flames, be safe. And uh, this will certainly help to protect those seedlings if we do have that frost that the Met Office have been suggesting we're going to have. So, guys, get out there build yourself one of these and if you don't want to go to this extent okay up here we're going to have a little link to the 100 hour candle which will also be able to help you out anyway guys that's it from this episode i hope this was of interest and i'll see you in the next one bye bye